Let's see, we've got Maison Margiela, Narciso Rodriguez, Zadig and Voltaire, Zoologist Perfumes, Initio Parfums, Paco Rabanne, and so on and so on and so on. So many brands with new fragrances launching soon. I'm gonna tell you about them coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. Are you excited for these releases? Are there way too many overload of releases launching lately? Lots of them. Many of them are coming. And it seems like today's video is mostly about designers. The designers are really overloading us with constant flankers. Although we have maybe a couple of original fragrances here and there in this list, but the majority of them are flankers. Are you tired of flankers? Do you enjoy flankers? What do you consider a better fragrance as a flanker of an original fragrance. Let me know, put a comment down below. Because sometimes flankers are better than the original fragrances. For example, Givenchy has a new fragrance in this uh, video. And they did Givenchy Gentleman Givenchy Eau de Toilette, which I didn't think it was great. But the Eau de Parfum, was, I felt, was really great. So we've got a lot of fragrances I'm going to talk to you about. In fact, one of the fragrances is Initio Parfum's Narcotic Delight. I'm going to do a first impressions on camera, although... It's not necessarily a first impression. I'm actually going to re-sniff it on camera because I've already smelled it here recently and uh, we'll let you know what it is all about. But let's get started with the first fragrance, Maison Margiela from The Garden. I recently did a best of series from Maison Margiela. Man, you guys got upset at me for not even discussing Jazz Club. Definitely not one of my favorite fragrances, but From the Garden sounds pretty interesting. And I feel like now they're doing unisex fragrances because back in the day when they first launched, they would do a, f a for him or for her fragrance. So this is unisex. It's created by Olivier Cresp. It features notes of patchouli, crystallized moss, white musk, bourbon, geranium, tomato leaves, rose, grapefruit, green mandarin, black current. So this seems like a very garden forward fragrance utilizing notes that come from the garden. It sounds pretty fun and green. I'm quite curious about it. Olivia Crest does some great work. He's known for Angel. He's known for Dolce Gabbana's uh, Light Blue for her and many many other fragrances. If anyone's gotten their nose on this one please let me know. Hopefully I'll get my nose on it very soon. So we've got a duo of fragrances from the house of Narciso Rodriguez. So Narciso Rodriguez is under Shiseido Group. Are they? Yeah, I think they're under Shiseido Group. They could have gone to um, Interparfums, but I believe they're under Shiseido. Maison Margiela under L'Oreal. And uh, Narciso Rodriguez for him, Vetiver Musk. And then we've got Narciso Rodriguez for her, Musk Nude. But Narciso Rodriguez as a, gen uh, as a, as a brand in general doesn't... I don't see their fragrances here in stores. Uh, if you guys do, let me know at uh, department stores near you. I see them all over Europe. They must be more popular there. So for him, Vetiver Musk is created by Mathilde Bijou. Recently spoke about her uh, in a video for Italie Bird Orange. She's done a few fragrances for them, including Frustration. And she's done the for him, Vetiver Musk, featuring notes of cedar, patchouli, vetiver, red algae, which scares me. I don't like the idea of that note. Musk, bourbon geranium, frankincense, lavender, cypress, green cardamom, and nutmeg. Did you notice I, I read bourbon geranium for not only for him, vetiver, musk, but also from the garden. So interesting that uh, we've got geranium in both fragrances. I'm a fan of... The few fragrances that uh, Narciso Rodriguez has launched for men. And I'm quite curious to see what this one's all about. Although they're kind of focusing on vetiver again. The last series, Blue Noir series, was vetiver focused. And uh, we've got vetiver, for him, vetiver musk now. And then the next one, the, the feminine one, for her, musk nude. This is Sonia Constant. And I believe the last series was done by Sonia Constant for, for the him fragrances. But uh, they've moved on to Mathilde Vigeau, and now we've got only Sonia Constant, who's known for fragrances for Tom Ford, and then, of course, her own collection of fragrances, Ella K. For, for her, musk nude features notes of woods, tonka, patchouli, damask rose, musk, flowers, jasmine, pink pepper. If you guys are fans of this line, let me know. Again, not very easy to find in the States. Of course, you can find them at discounters, but I can't walk into Macy's here and buy Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. I wonder why. Same thing with Zadig and Voltaire. I can't really go to a store and pick up Zadig and Voltaire fragrances here. And this is also under Shiseido, just like uh, Narciso Rodriguez. So Zadig and Voltaire has two new fragrances, one for men, one for women. This is really her, and this is really him. 
So it really wasn't this is him and this is her. Now it's really this is really her and this is really him. So it's basically, you know, capitalizing on the collections that they've had and just, you know, doing new flankers. So the this is really her created by Sidonie Lancesor and she's created all of the fragrances in the This Is Her collection. Has notes of sandalwood, vanilla, labdanum, patchouli, honey, chestnuts, metallic notes, rose, basil, pink pepper. So I don't know what the deal is with the whole metallic notes but both the This Is Really Her and This Is Really Him have or feature the metallic notes but This Is Really Him once again is created by Natalie Lorsan. She's created the entire This Is Him series and this one features notes of amber wood, palo santo, metallic notes, orange blossom, grapefruit, lemons. I think the original was pretty solid, This Is Him, in the black bottle. Uh, later on the, the collections just went all over the place and let's see how This Is Really Him smells like. I don't know, if you guys have gotten your nose on these two fragrances, let me know, put a comment down. And the next fragrance we're gonna talk about is Initio's Narcotic Delight. I have a sample here, I have smelled it. It's vanilla, tobacco, cherries, cognac, hedion, pink pepper, black pepper. This is a really good uh, boozy fragrance. I think this is going to be popular for sure. I think people are going to like this one. But let's go ahead and sniff it real quickly. Got a strip here. Even though they have cherries, from what I remember smelling, I didn't get cherries. Like it's, it wasn't like like lost cherry or something ch fully cherried. But the cherry is there to just kind of move forward the booziness of the fragrance. Narcotic Delight is quite delicious. You can smell the tobacco. You can smell the cognac. The cognac is really strong. And of course the vanilla comes in as well. And that cherry note, it's there, but this is not a cherry fragrance. This is the kind of cherry fragrance I like, you know? I like Tom, Tom Ford's Lost Cherry and fragrances that smell like that, but I think the cherry is way overdone in those fragrances. But here, it's kind of like a cherry liqueur, but not focusing on the cherry, you're focusing on the liqueur more. The cherry is an afterthought, but you will smell it, you can pick it up, but it's not this kind of girly, fruity cherry fragrance. This is more about the cognac. This is more about the vanilla. This is more about the tobacco. And then of course you've got the hedion, the pink pepper, black pepper. You can really pick up the peppers in here. Quite spicy. So yeah, this one's going to be popular, I think. I don't know if you're a fan of Initio Parfums. Narcotic Delight will be pretty popular. At least in my book it will be. And we'll see how you guys react to it. But moving on, Dior has a new fragrance called New Look. I've already done a first impressions video on this uh, some time ago, back in December, I think? Yeah, in December. Late December, I ended up with a sample and I did a short video on uh, YouTube. You can go catch it. But it's the second Private Blend Collection fragrance after Francis Cookgen took over as creative director. He already came out with Dior Riviera. Now we've got New Look. So they've basically discontinued New Look 1947. I was able to get the last bottle uh, New Look 1947 is gone, and New Look versus New Look 1947 are completely different. New Look 1947 is more of an amber floral. I've got various videos on the channel about it. You can search for it and find it. New Look, on the other hand, when I did that first impression, I had never smelled it before. I said citruses and incense. Turned out to be, for sure, incense, but aldehydes rather than the citruses. And I think the aldehydes could be citrus aldehydes, because there's definitely an aldehydic fizziness but also a citrusiness there as well. And along with the aldehydes, there's the frankincense, as I said, and amber. So it's totally different than New Look 1947, whereas New Look 1947 has that benzoin note. So it's ambery, it's floral, but not necessarily smoky like frankincense, even, even though benzoin is a uh, resin, kind of like frankincense, but it's more sweet and less smoky, whereas frankincense is really smoky, not necessarily sweet. So those are the differences. I don't know how popular this is going to be, I know a lot of people were disappointed that this got discontinued and now they've got new look. No more new look 1947. So Dior is capitalizing on a lot of their movements and things to do with their clothing and designs and things like that. And so I wish they come up with a new name. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Francis Kirkchen is going to create something really, truly, amazingly original for the Private Blend collection. So far, it's a bit disappointing. Let me know what you guys think. So we've got Gentleman Givenchy Society EDP Extreme also launching, also under LVMH, because Dior is under LV LVMH. 
In this particular version, I don't get the notes and there's no connection to the original. Floral notes, iced coffee, spicy notes, and woody notes. I always like the idea of coffee and fragrances, so I'm curious to get my nose on it. It does say EDP Extreme, the original was EDP, but now we've got an extreme version and totally changed up notes. Because I remember the original had Narcissus as a note. They're not mentioning Narcissus, they are mentioning floral notes in this one. So we'll see how it is. As soon as I get my nose on it, I'll report back. But two Hermes fragrances are launching, one for the men, Hermes H24 Herbs Vives. Is that how you say it? Christine Nagel, and it's a for men fragrance for sure. And it features notes of herbs, pear sorbet, physical, cycle, physical. So what the heck is physical? I looked it up. It's a, it brings high performing, long lasting freshness during and after use in flavored products without any mint smell or taste. And it's a proprietary ingredient from the firm Main Man. Is that how you say it? Man? Main? It's spelled Main, but it's Man, I believe, and that's how they pronounce it. So they've used it here in a fragrance. Fizz cool, or it's almost like sci psychology, cycle. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it is. And this one also seems like it's totally venturing away from the original H24 series. So how different is it going to be? They haven't really done a parfum yet. We've got this rather odd uh, flanker. Another thing, a lot of people complain about Christine Nagel and they say things like uh, how she, her creations are kind of boring. But when you compare her creations to Jean-Claude Elena, what do you guys think? Do you prefer Jean-Claude Elena's work over Christine Nagel's work? Let me know, put a comment down below. But the next fragrance, her Messens collection fragrance, it's Oud Alezan. So Oud Alezan is in the Hermesens collection and I have not been a big fan of this collection because they're all Eau de Toilettes. But the rumor is Oud Alezan is going to be coming in Eau de Parfum. Have you guys heard this? An associate that works with the brand told me that this particular fragrance is finally going to be released as an Eau de Parfum. Once again, it's created by Christine Nagel. It's a unisex offering. Features notes of oud, rose, and rose water. That's all I have for this fragrance, but very curious to see how it is, how it is going to be different than the original collection, and I believe there's going to be a price increase on it as well, since it is coming in Eau de Parfum. Is um, Hermes, Hermes going to do the same thing that Chanel did? when they launched Boy in Eau de Parfum, when the rest of the uh, Les Exclusives collection was Eau de Toilette, then everything changed over to Eau de Parfum. Is that what they're gonna do with the Hermesens collection? We shall see, but that apparently is Oud Alezan is releasing in Eau de Parfum. So Diesel has a new fragrance, another unisex fragrance. They launched a unisex fragrance last year. It's that lavender vanilla combo. This year they're focusing on lavender once again. It's unisex, but with different notes. It's called Diesel D-Red, and it features notes of grapefruit, lavender, and sandalwood. We'll see how it is. I like the red bottle. It's a similar bottle to the last fragrance they launched, the unisex fragrance from last year. And so this time it comes in red. Moving on to Nikos. Nikos has a new sculpture flanker coming out, whereas everything else has been for men, this time we've got a unisex offering. It's called Voyage on Orient. Amber, cinnamon, cloves, ginger, myrrh, and vanilla. This sounds like a holiday fragrance come to life. Cinnamon, cloves, and ginger, that smells like the holidays to me, or it sounds like it smells like the holidays. So we've got amber, myrrh, and vanilla, that's gonna create a very ambery base. And the rest of it, we've got warm spices and some freshness zing from the ginger. I really, really like the sound of this. But also, it seems like it's totally venturing away from the original sculpture fragrance. So we'll see how it is. I'm curious to get my nose on it. As soon as I get my nose on it, I will report back. So Loewe has a kind of an exclusive collection of fragrances. And in September, when I was visiting London, I stopped, I believe it was Harrods, at the Loewe section of fragrances. And the associate there told me their exclusive collection is all going to be changed over from their bottles that they are in, and they're all going to be uniform bottles. So I believe San Miguel is a relaunch in the new bottle, from what I remember, because they already have a fragrance called San Miguel, and now it's moving into the new bottle, unless they're changing things up. But I looked up the notes. Notes are very sim similar. If you're a fan of Loewe fragrances, let me know. Put a comment down below. I don't seem that they, I don't think that they are a very hyped brand, 
but I do think they have some great uh, designer fragrances. And it's a unisex offering with vetiver, bergamot, geranium, davana, patchouli, amber, violet, and rose. So I'm, I'm like liking the sound of that. And we'll see if the rest of the their upper end private collection type fragrances moves into, you know, regular bottles. Even though I think it's still going to be like a private collection or a more an exclusive uh, high-end collection, uh, I think uh, they're going to be in those uniform bottles. So Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Paradise Garden. I've never been a big fan of the Le Beau collection of fragrances, but I kind of like the sound of this. This is for men. It's mint, water notes, ginger, coconut, salt, figs, green notes, sandalwood, tonka beans. So it's almost seeming like it's going to be a salty, sort of aquatic, marine, green thing. I like the sound of it. I love green fragrances. Is green the next big trend? We shall see. But if you've gotten your nose on this, do let me know. Also the Loewe. If you've gotten your nose on that Loewe fragrance, let me know. The original and then also the new version. Then moving on to Zoo Zoologist perfumes, we've got Penguin, and Penguin uh, sounds pretty interesting. It's created by a perfumer by the name of Chiaki Nomura. Go going back to the Jean-Paul Gaultier, I believe that's Quinton Biche, but Penguin, unisex fragrance, Chiaki Nomura. I've never heard of this perfumer, and I'm curious to smell this one. It's ozonic notes, ice, juniper berry, saffron, suede, moss, pink pepper, musk, labdanum, sandalwood. I like some of the latest Zoologist perfumes. I've been waiting for Rabbit. Rabbit is delicious. I've already sa sampled it. It's carrot cake, I believe, from what I remember. But Penguin, I can't remember what it smells like because I sampled a bunch of unreleased stuff recently when I met with Victor, although it was last year. It's been almost a year. So I'm, I'm kind of curious and anxiously waiting for Rabbit, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to get my nose on Penguin as well. So L'Artisan Parfumer relaunches or does a new flanker of Passage des Enfer Extreme. So they have Passage des Enfers from time ago. In 2020, they launched Passage des Enfers Extreme. Now we've got the Dragon Edition, since this is the Year of the Dragon. And so we've got this new version of uh, Passage des Enfers. I believe the fragrance is staying the same. It's a unisex offering created by Olivia Giacobetti. It's her signature style. I really respect her style, combining like woods and smoky incense and things like that with white flowers. And basically that's what this is. Frankincense, lily, jasmine, sandalwood, and vanilla absolute. Really great scent, really great combo. And so this bottle is going to be a collector's edition bottle because that whole dragon edition and the whole year of the dragon thing. So wanted to report on that as well. Paco Rabanne has Phantom Intense. There's like five or six perfumers attached to this one. I'm not going to name them, but they're all IFF perfumers. It's a for men or for men uh, fragrance male targeted release. Cedar, moss, vanilla, rum, clary sage, cardamom, lavender, lemons, orange blossom. I feel like the collection is underwhelming except for the bottle is fun and playful. Catchy, great bottle design, quirky, goofy as well, but the collection's a bit underwhelming. The Parfum from last year was not necessarily very Parfum. So now they're coming out with Intense. We'll see how intense it's going to get. If you've gotten your nose on it, do let me know. And last but not least, until the bonus section, stay tuned for that because there's some exciting fragrances there. There's Bulgari Man in Black Parfum. I don't have too many details for this one yet, but I bought the first Bulgari Man in Black well, way back in like 2014, I believe. And I was a fan of that one for a while. And so now we're getting a Parfum version of it. I think it's an Albert, Alberto Moria's creation. I don't have the notes or anything for it, but I'm curious to see how they're going to do a Parfum of Bulgari's Man in Black. If you've gotten your nose on it, let me know. But I don't think this one's been released yet. But either way, guys, that's all I have for you here. And thanks so much for tuning in. If you've sampled any of the fragrances that I've spoken about today, let me know. Put a comment down below. And if there's anything else that's uh, coming out that you've heard about that I did not mention, put a comment down below so I can find out. Thanks so much for tuning in. As I said, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So Estee Lauder is launching a new private collection, Legacy Fragrances, all curated by Frederick Mall. Frederick Mall is under Estee Lauder, and Estee Lauder as a brand is known for a lot of great classic fragrances. So they've taken five classic feminine fragrances from the Estee Lauder catalog, and basically Frederick Mall has been involved in 
updating them, modernizing them, reformulating them, and giving them to us for a really expensive price. I've already sampled the fragrances. I do like them, but they're quite expensive. 100 ml for 280 is what I was told. They're not selling yet, and the price might change, but I confirmed it with two associates, 100 ml, $280. Nice looking bottles, you'll see the photos. And uh, yeah, very overpriced. I'm hoping that I can get these at a discount somehow because I, I really enjoy them. I'm a fan of classic vintage fragrances. These are great. And um, I should say they smelled very similar to what I remember smelling the originals minus some light twists and nuances to them. So White Linen Legacy is a floral aldehydic fragrance created, originally created by Sophia Grossman in 1978. So that's one of the fragrances. So Knowing Legacy is a cheaper floral fragrance created by Harry Fremont way back in 1988. Again, I sampled these fragrances. They're all really, really great, just overpriced. If they're really going to be selling at $280 for 100 ml, only for collectors or anyone that's really into these fragrances is going to really like them. Azure Legacy, oh my God, this one was fantastic. When I sprayed it, I smelled some cumin in it and I was like, damn, this smells good. So I think Azure Legacy and Private Collection Legacy are my two favorites out of this bunch. But Azure Legacy or Azure the Original is a cheaper leather fragrance created by Bernard Chant, one of my favorite, favorite perfumers. And it was originally created in 1969. And it reminds me of Aramis by Aramis, because in that same year, I believe it's the same year, Aramis by Aramis came out. But also Azure reminds me of Cabochard by Grey. And Cabochard also reminds me of Aramis. Moving on to Private Collection Legacy. Originally, Private Collection was launched uh, in 1973 and created by Vincent Marcello. And again, Private Collection Legacy smells fantastic. It's a green floral fragrance. I'm a fan of green floral fragrances. I'm just, in general, a green fragrance. And so this, this one really was great. Again, the price point is really, really high. But for me, Azure and also Private Collection Legacy were my two favorites from the five that are launching. And then finally, Este. Legacy, created by originally created by Bernard Chant in 1968, and uh, now we've got the update, and it's an aldehydic floral fragrance. So I'm 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 curious to get my nose on these further, play around with them. But on first sniff, the Azure Legacy and Private Collection Legacy were great. Everything smells great, though. I mean, they're just updated, currently modernized. I'm just not sure about the price point. I think the $280 is too high. And the bottles look really feminine for me as well. It's fine with the bottles. I'm fine with it. But I think uh, if there's a great price on these as a discount, I might be picking up all five because I really like classic fragrances and I enjoy what fragrances used to be back in the day and what they've become now. What have they become now? I I'm, I'm, yeah, really enjoy the classics. And these are basically paying tribute to uh, the classics from Estee Lauder, uh, very modernized and apparently Frederick Mall has been involved in uh, the curation of these fragrances and bringing us this new collection. I believe right now they're selling exclusively at Harrods, but soon big department stores will get them. I believe Arnim and Marcus here in San Francisco will start selling them on February 1st. So anyway, if you're a fan of these original fragrances in their original form or their current version, because they're still selling out there, let me show you, like this is Este, in its current version before what's gonna become of it in this new collection. So you can get this, which looks like this. Uh, and this, I think was around $100 and it's a 50 ml. So now as a 100 ml, you're gonna pay 280 for this legacy edition of this uh, Este fragrance, which this one to me is an aldehydic floral. It's kind of um, in that ballpark of uh, number five. I think this is Estee Lauder's kind of number five fragrance because it's aldehydic. And the other fragrance I have is Alliage, but Alliage is not coming into this legacy collection yet. And so hopefully soon 
uh, we can get that in this collection as well. We'll see how this does. I don't know how popular it is going to be. The price is quite high. If it was 200, since these are around 100, I think if it was 200, it might be fine. But there, there's going to be people out there that are looking for their classic fragrances. They're not going to find these everywhere because these are online. I can't see them anywhere at department stores. And they're going to say, oh, they have these fragrances now in this new bottle and everything. And most likely they're going to pick them up and things like that. So we'll see how it is. But if you've gotten your nose on these fragrances, do let me know. Put a comment down below. Now, if you don't know this, a lot of the feminine releases from Estee Lauder, there was a male version over at Aramis. Aramis launched all these fragrances. And so there's a male version of it with some minor masculine twists to that fragrance. Azure is the woman's version under Estee Lauder. And Aramis by Aramis is the male version. They're very similar fragrances, except for the male version, the Aramis by Aramis, which is one of my dad's favorite fragrances. I'm, I'm a fan of it. It had a bit more masculine touch to it compared to Azure, which was more feminine. But anybody that wants to wear one or the other can totally wear it. Because I think Azure has the cumin, which I can't find in the Aramis by Aramis. I don't know if it was there before, and in the current formulation it's not, but what I smelled with Azure, I really, really loved it. Azure and uh, Private Collection, as I said, were my two favorites. And if you want to find out more about the female version versus the male version of the Estee Lauder fragrances. I have a video on the channel about Aramis fragrances, which are now almost discontinued and gone. Uh, you can find out about the, the differences between there. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for another video soon. Bye-bye.